I see that some people are coming in, so I will take um, take some time to make the introduction. For those who don't know me, I'm Helene Jankvist. I'm the president of Women on Film and Television International, and right now in my living room in Sweden. Uh, I'm awfully happy today to have uh, to introduce the with the worldwide webinar from our sisters in Jamaica. Uh, this is, I think it's number eight or nine this year of our webinars. Uh, this time we will talk about, we will have a conversation between Deborah Hickling Gordon and Kenya Mattis about post pandemic. For those of you who are coming in to this meeting now, please write who you are and where you're from in the chat field. Uh, this conversation will take place about 30 minutes and afterwards you have the possibility to ask questions. There is a Q&A box where you can write your questions. So please do that. We are eager to hear your curiosity and where you're from. But as I said, it's a Great joy for me to hand over to Deborah and Kenya from our sisters chapter with Jamaica. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, I'm Deborah Hickling Gordon. Um, as Helen said, I'm from um, with Jamaica. I'm the president of with Jamaica, and I'm also a lecturer at the University of the West Indies in cultural and creative industries and an audiovisual producer by um by training and experience kenya um good day everyone i'm excited to be here thank you deborah thank you helene uh, my name is kenya mattis i'm a director of wift jamaica and i'm also a founder of listen me caribbean which is an animation and design studio and we make culturally inspired digital content for screens. So it's a real pleasure to be having this kind of conversation with you this evening, Deborah, in our collective living rooms as we reflect on post-pandemic. Um, really and truly, what are some emerging trends that we're seeing that have um, impacted developing countries in a very specific way? So I'll be asking a few questions and Deborah, I'm looking forward to hearing you share your thoughts. Are you ready to start? I am, and I know you have some great thoughts to share too, Kenya. So. Okay. Well, well, I'll, I'll see. I'm, I'm sure that we'll have a, we'll, uh, we'll be able to share them both. But, I mean, first of all, Debra, I mean, we're talking. Ever, if it's one word that we're probably all tired of hearing right now, it's COVID and it's COVID-19, but we still have to talk about it, right? And every country has been affected by this pandemic in some very specific ways, especially the screen-based industries. And it came at a time where we were actually seeing some trends occurring for film and for TV. We're seeing new you know, streaming platforms for distribution popping up increasing global production for film and TV. Um, a lot of diverse content now, you know, appearing on screens and even a convergence of, you know, film, TV, games, VR, all these platforms, all these formats, and then boom, pandemic. Um, and this has an impact on our, you know, global um, audiovisual industries in different ways. We saw shutdowns, postponements, and scale downs of productions, travel suspensions, closure of cinemas. You know, here in Jamaica, is is our is our national cinema open? Um, we well, now we're down to a drive-in. Uh, we, we have a single drive-in. The drive-in that was closed for many years has been reopened. Um, and so that's, yeah. that's something new. And I think there are other drive-ins around the world. I mean, the, the, the phenomenon of drive-in that, that, that went away, came back. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things that is widely acceptable is that um, the audiovisual sector made the... the pandemic more palatable. There was a lot more content that was being um, developed. There was actually a meeting of um, CARICOM, cultural and creative industries experts who said that there, there was, there really has been an, an exponential growth in the amount of content that was, was mm -hmm. being produced, but it did not reflect in revenue. So people mm. were working, people were still doing things, people were still getting involved in activities, but there was, there, there was no money being made. Um, so the, so, they, so that, be, that being the case, so Deborah, 
if it is that Caribbean countries, we are seeing production um, and there's a drop in revenue, are there any challenges that you saw that really affected developing countries in a very unique and specific way, do you think? Yes, I think what happened when COVID hit, um, each country, developing countries were already wrestling with challenges to do with their, their, their um, audiovisual sectors. So mm -hmm. I, I think we need to make the comparison between developing countries and what we call advanced industrial countries. Advanced industrial countries are those that have very streamlined and straightforward um, audiovisual sectors with all of the subsectors, television, film, um, digital um, animation and, and some of those things and they had clear supply chains and clear um, value chains and so on. One of the challenges that we have in, in developing countries is, is that many many of us have really just been just been going through the process of formulating what those look like for us. So mm -hmm. we have not, we've not all put all the pieces in place. So when COVID came, it exacerbated some of the, the problems that we were already having and having. And some of those problems were specifically um, issues to do with distribution. That's our real main, main problem. Um, mm -hmm. Especially in Jamaica, I can tell you for sure that production is hardly an issue, save for the funding of production. We have, we have, we have high levels of, of production, with, um, lots of content, great stories. Stories and 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 the people operate at very high levels. But mm -hmm. what the issue is when you produce the material, what do you do with it? Where do you put Where it? Where does it go? Where does it go? Um, access to finance and funding is a major problem for us to market sales not specific to all developing countries, but certainly for our region. We have 44 mm -hmm. million people in all of the Caribbean. Nigeria. And how many in Jamaica alone? <laughs> three point three million, two point eight to three million, um, and in Nigeria, one hundred and ninety-five million. So, if you wow. compare the the the, the um the numbers to which Nollywood has to distribute. And India, um, Bollywood, 1.35 billion people. Uh, so with our 44 million, we, we don't necessarily make an attractive market and we don't have the numbers through which to distribute. So that, that puts us at, at a disadvantage. But I must say to you, Kenya, the levels mm -hmm. of production and the kinds of stories that have come and are coming out of Jamaica, continue to come out of Jamaica, put us up there, <laughs> you know, with, with, with the rest of the world. Our issues, we need to um, address some of the challenges that we have specifically um, to do with that issue of market size. Issues to ac of access to technology continue, continue to be a problem. Um, software, every now and then, you know, there are areas that, that some of the large software um, distributors block so you can get software in some places um, issues of ease of my team has had that issue in terms of like adobe suites we have to go jump through a few hoops in order to access certain software because they can't just and get them using a local well. credit card mm -hmm. right so um the the ease of doing business i was reading a, a a blog the other day by um the producer of one of the large um film festivals and he was saying bureaucracy even in the even for those persons who are ahead of the, the curve um, in advanced industrial countries the bureaucracy in terms of distribution and doing business is really a challenge policy i i wouldn't go there we're not even going to talk about that today because there's some lots of issues to do with the formulation of policy in many of our developing countries um, so many of our governments are just catching up to the cultural and creative industries being a thing, a real thing, you know, a, a sector that 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 needs um, that that requires the same examination as agriculture and industry and you know some of and tourism for many of mm -hmm. us. And the, the final one that I think is important is that we feel sometimes that we remain on the margin of the global film sector. So we, we, we don't necessarily feel that we are central to the process. Mm -hmm. And many, many of us from many developing countries, and I think the point needs to be made that when we say developing countries, we're not, the developing countries is not a monolith. You have from huge 
and emerging economies within um, the framework of developing to very small, um, tiny nations that you know don't have any industrial framework or very little industrial framework. So. Um, at di we're at different levels, but, mm -hmm. but no matter what, I mean, first of all, 88% of the global population are from developing countries. Um, yet still we feel, especially in, 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 in some areas and def definitively in the, in the film sector, um, the audiovisual sector, which is a convergence of all the screen um, elements that we're not necessarily at the center. Um, and, and, and we think that there's a little bit more room for us at the center. I think that that point is such a powerful point, though. If you look at the importance of film, TV, and the audiovisual industries to one's sense of identity and the cultural, you know, belonging, it's amazing when you see yourself on screen mm -hmm. and the impact that can have for how you sort of, you know, determine who you are and what you do and to see that as you're sharing 88 percent of the world is considered to be developing and oh, yet 88 percent sort of feel you know on the margin or not necessarily at the center of this industry i think that speaks to a huge um potential you know opportunity for us to take our, our place you know um at the center of, of such an important and critical space so so we've named these as challenges but they mm -hmm. really are actually opportunities because Absolutely. the pandemic has given us an opportunity as, as we're seeing all around to pivot, pivot. And I mean, if you think of pivoting, that is literally, I wasn't so great at netball, but um, if, you, if you think about it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a great gendered analogy, I suppose. It's keeping one foot on the ground and taking right. a 360 and determining, all right, what are we gonna do now? And so we need to be able to look at all of these areas that we've identified as challenges, in particular the dis distribution one, and see how we're going to move forward. And that's that's where we are at this point. Okay. So, so I mean, I'm I'm processing what you're sharing, and I'm thinking of some of what you mentioned. You mentioned um, you know distribution um, and market access um, policy being one thing that we didn't even bother to go into. Um, market size. Some of these things are things that we can change. Some of these things we, can necessar we can't necessarily change. Um, but I think that in looking at or the big picture um, and also looking at some of the emerging trends that we're now seeing, it might also help us to identify opportunities that we as developing countries can tap into to take advantage of, you know, our strengths and to use our strengths to pivot from our weaknesses. So, we have been seeing um, where I think some indicators that things are sort of changing in distribution, things are changing in production, there's new technology, um, there are new eras that we can use now to sort of, as you, as you use the word pivot. What are some of the emerging trends that you're seeing specifically in the developing um, countries in their audiovisual sectors that could actually help us to emerge from the pandemic stronger than we were before? Okay, I, so I think we need to be looking at some of the things that have been happening generally in um, developing countries. Many developing countries have been going through in the last 20 years this process of liberalization, which really just means they've been moving from a, a process of public service, um, uh, television in, 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 the, in the context of, of television towards a co commercial models. So they're trying to find their feet in trying to work out what commercial models look like for each of them. Um, and, and, and for the Jamaican example, do you mean like when we move from one national TV station to having cable providers for TV? Absolutely. So there was cable. Okay. And um, th th you know th there was this, this access to satellite, and then um, the the production processes changed. So you had more independent people because most people were were employed either to the television station or. And the other thing that happened is that 
those siloed audiovisual sectors that so film was in one silo, television was in another silo, you know, um, animation was variable because it wasn't really around. They all started to come together. So you started to see people who were operating in one se sector of the audiovisual um, industry now starting to operate in another. So those the ways in which we worked changed. We had to learn more about business. And so um, those of us especially, I know that I worked in television and I worked as a television producer and reporter initially. And so the notion of having to create a budget was not something I was I, I ever did when I worked in public service television. It was not until I came out and became an independent producer, having worked in, in advertising before, that I, I used some of those sensibilities. But there are lots of people who really just went in to write scripts and ended up an independent, you know, kind of um, practitioner. And the, and the whole thing changed. And so there's been that, that kind of catching up that has had to happen um, and very often without any form of formal assistance or the tr another thing another thing that has actually happened Kenya, that's, that's really interesting when you look at it there's so much more training that's available now so there's mm. there all of our universities now have programs for um audiovisual audiovisual um sectors uh, some more technical than others, some more leaning towards scripting and so on. But there's a great deal of training that, that is now available. That's another trend that, 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 that we're seeing. There's an ongoing um, process of growth that is happening within audiovisual sectors. And of course, now, especially now we have the YouTube revolution where everybody has their own channel and everybody is, is able to curate their, their own content, no matter what it is. So there are more specialist skills we find mm -hmm. in, in developing countries where there was a kind of time when you had to learn how to do everything. And now mm. you have specialists that are emerging who are who are really quite proficient, and um, the issue of entrepreneurship and so on. So these are some of the things that that are happening. And I've I've, I've done some research in in Ghana, and in Nigeria, and looked at some of the other areas, you know. And these are similar things that are happening. The changes are happening, and people are now ready to get to distribution, you know. Which I is think, and I think that that's a very present problem because certainly 10 years ago the, the 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 chief conversation that we would have been hearing would have been production how do we get more productions how do we equip ourselves to produce more and to produce better content and now you're saying that shift is toward where we have the content and but now we'd like to distribute it in a way where monetization is a viable option because we like to sustain ourselves right. um, or, you know from we what have, we're doing have the ideas we have the know-how because right. of the financing issues as well. And I think we need mm -hmm. to talk a little bit about the financing issues. Um, in with JA, we've had these um, webinars. When we've mm -hmm. been talking, um, Kenya, you have been, you've been the person who's kind of led that charge. And we've been talking a lot about trying to find the appropriate financing models. We've been talking to traditional financiers. But we have to find ways in which the financiers are understanding the ways in which the creative and in particular the audiovisual model works. It's difficult to be able to say to, to a financier that we have what we call an inverted supply chain, which means we need the money up front. We need to have the money at the beginning of the process. That's not what these people want to hear, Deborah. <laughs> right? These people want to hear, can I 10x my money in six months? And uh, how risky is this business? What so... is the ROI, right? Exactly. And, um, and so it, it's really for us and for even those, those, it, those advanced industrial industries who can help us to make the case to persons, we have to do our pre-production upfront, which means before we get into production, we need to know that this is covered, you know? Right. Um, and so th th there may be some partnership that we can do in terms of helping to identify what those models actually look like, the financing models, in order to encourage our own financiers um, to understand uh, I've, I've already always said, and as a, especially a part of the work that I'm doing, that 
in this in, in as much as we need financial literacy for creatives we need creative literacy for for financiers mm. and um so that's something that i think we can we can work to work towards and that's something that i think that is kind of tenuous at the moment and it it it's leaving us with a challenge of, of how to move forward I've, I've seen so many um proofs of content proof of uh, proofs concept concept proof proofs of is it proofs <laughs> anyway i think you could say right. that <laughs> proofs of concept yes mm -hmm. um and so how do we take them to the yeah. full their full extent like to either from you know short to feature or from a pilot to a series like that's usually where the sticking point is because in developing countries budget is a big issue like ensuring that you know we can actually find the funding for with persons or partners who and in the case of Jamaica I think it's such an interesting point when you made having creative literacy for financiers when we speak with them in the context of a Jamaica or the Caribbean we don't have as many success stories that a financial you know um, an investor or a funder could look to to say hey based on the success of this film and how much it has brought in I feel okay to invest in it whereas maybe in Hollywood and other places is, you know where there are more examples of success um you know the the case for saying that your money is well spent in a creative venture might be right. easier to make than for in our case is what you're saying and there's, there's a there's a linkage to to the international market because mm -hmm. there is all of this mystery about the distribution deal and the yeah. corridors to distribution you know and that mystery exists for advanced industrial filmmakers. But for those of us on the margin, it's an even more mystical mm -hmm. um, space. If there were opportunities and, um, in, in which we, we could demystify some of these issues of, mm -hmm. of, of, of getting to a distributor or, mm -hmm. or um, uh, showcasing our materials for uh, a distributor on a larger scale, I can think of at least 10 projects that are sitting and waiting that would just love to be, you know, so uh, um, for a distributor to say, bring the 10 films and we'll start them through, you know, we'll have a look at them. Mm -hmm. But getting into those corridors, um, these mystical corridors is, is, is a challenge. And that's mm -hmm. a part of the issue. We, I mean, we're not necessarily, there may be two people or three people within um, our own industry who can pick up a telephone and make a telephone call and say, you know, um, can somebody, can I, who can I talk to at Sony? Or, you know, mm. you know, who's over at Warner that I can, you know, and so there, there are some of opening up some of those corridors and being clear about the way to get there. You know, some some clear kind of defined, um, you know, routes towards distribution. We see that it's so, opening. I mean, Netflix has forty five percent of their forty five percent of their content is um, English speaking, which means fifty five percent is is not. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's you know remarkable. I think that there's some, based on what's happening and, and with the new emerging trends, there are new avenues that, you know, and, you know, we as Jamaicans, as Caribbean people, we are, we are very good at, you know, just going out there and just, do, we just do things. We just do things. And then afterward, we kind of figure out how it actually works. Because if you were to wait until you have all the ducks in a row and you have all the resources, chances are nothing would get done. Absolutely. So in in the spirit of us i think we have for the for the remainder of our time five more minutes oh my gosh in the spirit of us um thinking of you know things that we can do that we are empowered to do to you know make the changes that we'd like to see for the next post pandemic period what's one thing you think we should continue doing in the caribbean one thing you think we should discontinue we should stop and what's one new thing that we should start to do to really help us to take advantage of or to become an even better audiovisual industry post pandemic? Okay, I'm gonna try to frame it in the context of this international organization that is an international powerhouse. I mean, some okay. of the names of people who 
um, who are who are involved in this process in 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 WIFTI from all across the world. I think if we were all to sit together, um, we could come up with some really great solutions as to how to um, deal with the developing world issues. Absolutely. I think we should continue to 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 look at some of the the, the um, online sharing that we're doing festivals mm -hmm. webinars and so on i think mm -hmm. this platform has been very important um mm -hmm. based on a point that you made uh, when we were talking yesterday that some of us finding the plane fair to you know kind of get across halfway across the world it's a challenge but you know if i can sit in my my living room this afternoon and not only reach people from around the world but if, when i when i watch the other webinars share you know sharing what people from around the world have had to say that's remarkable to me so i think that's Absolutely. one thing we have to continue this form of education and sharing through all the different fora that we can um so that's yeah continue that we certainly mm -hmm. should continue with that more <laughs> online events more online webinars access and marketplaces so we don't have to always depend on a, being in the same room definitely i'm on board with that uh -huh. um, and what's one thing you think that we should discontinue this is always a tricky one okay the discontinue i think we need to change our mindset we need okay. to go through a mindset change. I think, especially those of us in developing countries, we need to come out of that place where we think that we're on the margin of the, um, of the, of the sector. So, okay, mm -hmm. there's some real issues about access, real issues. Mm -hmm. But I think if we were to start thinking differently about those return on investment, ROI questions, and um, we, start, we need to stop thinking that we can't change the existing proposition. When you see what Nollywood and Bollywood would have done in the last 20 years mind you with their 195 million people and one point something billion people they are they're more likely to kind of shift <laughs> um the, the market in ways that we can't but they did it one step at a time they they got up and they produced in communities until um until the community the wider community could um, had to take them seriously. So mm. we need to go through a mindset change that, that has to do with the ways in which we do business. Um, we need to stop avoiding the issues of risk. Um, mm. We need to make our, our projects manageable um, in, in ways that, that, you know, that, that, are, that we can provide the, um, we can provide the proof of concept so that we can bring them to the table in a meaningful kind of way. So stop waiting until we find the money before we just try and produce our short to at least show that we have an MVP or a proof of concept and then we can sort of seek funding and have those conversations thereafter is one, yes. one aspect of that. And, and work in communities and work together as... So for is that example, your start? You have one thing to start, you know, what are you going to start? What no, should no, we no, start? No, oh, the start, the start now. Yeah. I think we need to be, I think we need to be um, collaborating in different sorts okay. of ways. Um, so okay. I had three in mind um, and I know one, one pretty much always exists, already exists. Um, we spoke yesterday, Kenya, and you raised the issue of a marketplace. And um, Helen was able to tell us that there is actually a marketplace that exists called Herflix, um, and that they're going to provide us with a little bit more information as to how it's it's a platform on which, yeah, you know, um, we can distribute our films, and there is a monetization um, formula. Uh, and and it's available to anybody who's a WIFTY member. So there you go, yay! Um, but I think there there are two additional things that we can do, and I think one of them is to kind of create a developing world task force working group kind of thing where we can where we can look at the issues that we have um, collectively, and we can see where we can help each other. Um, I, I've written about what I call the creation of a geo strategy for developing countries. We need to be able to use the cultural and creative industries, the audiovisual, to be able to make linkages, trade linkages, um, identity linkages, all sorts of linkages with, with people of the global south who are able to say, let's do a co-production. And, and it's, not the, it's, it's not bound by the EU. 
right? And the challenges mm. of people who are doing um, business with Canada who have, you know, have their own um, kind of protective issues. Um, mm. So let's go to like, hey, I'm sure I know that I have a crew that would pack up and go to Gambon or Nigeria or South Africa or Australia real quick. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> you know, um, should should we be the invited? more the more collaborations South, South collaboration. between developing? Okay, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. And then what's something else you said that we should start doing? I think that I don't know within uh, something maybe we can talk to, to Helen about and having um, a think tank about hmm. an kind of inclusion think tank that speaks to issues of policy, that speaks to issues of training. Um, and within these processes, we find we, we can mentor, um, mm-hmm. we, we can mentor new, new chapters, mentor new individuals. Um, I, have, I have scores of young people who I teach um, from day to day who would be so excited to know that they have a mentor in Iceland or mm. a, a mentor from Denmark, you know, it, it, mm-hmm. it's students, I'm talking about, you know, and, and even those of us who work in the industry, uh, who can, you know, get aligned with somebody just for the experience of it. And now the online thing makes that possible. And I think adding to that point of the think tank, I was just envisioning just to know when you're speaking, the power of, you know, um, speaking with somebody who they have uh, they have had their own unique challenges but they're sort of aligned to yours and but there are a couple of steps ahead of you so we can mm-hmm. speak specifically to the issues that you raise of whether it's distribution or you know of that creative literacy for like how did you get people in your developing country to start funding you know um, films and, and tv she's like having those specific kinds of conversations I think would really help persons locally who are battling with those same issues. I remember um, hearing the, our Nigerian High Commissioner speak and she, she was encouraging us, you know, encouraging filmmakers to come and, you know, see what's happening in Nigeria or hear what's happening in Nigeria. And she mm-hmm. said when they started, they started out in communities and they started begging for money. Please, can you, you know, where, where? and then when it didn't come, they just started to work. They started to put films together. Until now, you know, you have to be knocking on their door. They're not knocking on any doors anymore, you know. And and she Absolutely. said now the banks are throwing money at the industry, which has become the second largest in, within their economy. I mean. That's amazing. Yeah. That's. So there, I think, and that's a similar mindset, just do things. Just get done. start where you are, um, f- use what you have and do what you can. And with that, especially I think in a space like ours in developing countries where sometimes, to be fair, you have politicians and people who make a lot of pretty announcements, but you don't actually see things happening. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to believe you, I have to see it first. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately with film, sometimes it can be a bit expensive, but there are ways that we can do this at a lower budget now to at least get people to see the vision that we see in our heads. And then with that, we can gradually get the buy-in from the institutions. You know what is important? And it's important that this global level of WIFT2, but we're seeing it on the ground as well. Organizations. Mm-hmm. We have another, there's another organization in Jamaica called JAPTA, um, which is mm-hmm. the Jamaica Film and Television Association. They have worked a lot with um, our own national promotion agency. And when you see the kind of work that they are putting out and making things happen for, you mm-hmm. know, for individuals with, within the sector, you know that it requires, you need to have a critical mass. So we need to be looking at yeah. organizations and institutions as well. Um, I don't know whether we need to be looking at like forming an institution, or an, an element within WIFTI that, that kind of looks at some of the developing world, world challenges because they're unique mm-hmm. challenges. They're a little different. Um, it, we don't want to be set aside. That's not what we're looking for. We, we're, 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 we're excited to be among, amongst this, this, this kind of robust organization. But we do think that there, there, some time needs to be spent kind of 
you know, fostering the thing forward because, you know, yeah. and we have some ground built, some, some work to do on the ground as well yeah. to sort of build up our capacity, not, not just capacity in terms of production, but our capacity to work together um, to build the systems and structures and processes that are necessary to get yes. this sort of, you know, industrial uh, or industry-wide um, results at other so countries. we're not have, talking so. about policy today. Exactly. No, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to go there. But listen, I think we've touched on some really important and big issues. I think each of those points can be their own webinar. Um, so there's definitely a lot more to discuss there. But um, on a top level, I'm really glad that we're able to at least share, you know, what are some of the ways that the developing countries that I have, at least in cases that are similar to ours, have been affected by the pandemic. Um, we also touched on what are some trends that we see happening. Now we're seeing more education, more training opportunities. Um, we're seeing where people are producing a lot more. Um, and we've also okay. seen that. Um, yeah, a good point. Oh, sure. Um, Go ahead. Kind of, kind of defines the, the two. So in the post-pandemic um, responses of governments, the only thing I'm going to say about governments today is that you can see the difference with the developing world ones and the ones with advanced industrial. The advanced industrial ones have, have put together large funds that have been available for creatives. And I went through, there's a, there are a couple of documents and there's really, you know, good money available. But mm. in, the, in the developing world, it's a lot more symbolic. So in one country, they will give you the opportunity to tour your tour 30 museums virtually, or they, they, they put in a think tank or, mm -hmm. and that's because the resources are not there to kind of do the kind of cash funds for right. the development of those industries. So again, you can see that there is some form of disparity when it comes to the recovery efforts of, of those sectors, um, because plans have been made within the context of, of of some of the, the larger industries to assist people. But it, it's just mm -hmm. not possible where, especially in the, the context of opportunity costs, if you have the hospital that you need to buy up, then it's, you know, what you're gonna choose if you're going, if you need an exactly. MRI machine or the film sector, you know? So there's some of those opportunity cost issues that, that exist that we need to be clear about as well. Our industry. So, and at the end of the day, it does come down to us as practitioners in the industry to come up with some creative solutions to at least to get the ball rolling and to keep ourselves active. Um, and hopefully through, um, you know, using technology and having conversations which, which we would not traditionally have had with people who we may not normally speak to, like the financiers, we can mm -hmm. see some new inroads being made post pandemic. So I'm excited about the future. And uh, I think at this point in time, if there are any questions that anyone has for Deborah um, or myself, we'd be happy to take them now. Perfect. So that's my cue. Uh, I'll just come in here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, Regina. <laughs> hello. Um, yeah, I'm Regina. Um, for those that uh, yeah, uh, haven't really met me before, I, I do uh, communication and membership within WIFT International. Um, Yes, and I'll just be the ghost voice and I'll ask you questions to our wonderful two ladies. Um, we have one first question that's sort of WIFTI related. Um, and it's a question uh, that goes, um, are there any other existing WIFTI chapters or sort of emerging uh, organizations for women in the Caribbean? And which ones would they be apart from WIFTI Jamaica? Um, in WIFTI, no, uh, only Jamaica at the moment. We've actually been in, in contact. Uh, we, have, we have within WIFTI, with Jamaica, we have um, a subcommittee that deals with the diaspora and um, the Caribbean, uh, the rest of the Caribbean, the rest of the region. So we have been in discussions with others. We wanted to get ourselves on a firm footing first before we kind of reached out to the others. But there, I know that there are people waiting in the wings in Barbados, in Trinidad, in Dom Rep, in, you know, um, so there's no formal organization, but we are hoping, especially because of our market size, to be able to kind of create a with the Caribbean kind of thing. I mean, we have issues in terms of the individual organizations. Um, we'll see how that works, but at the moment it's with Jamaica and we're, we have, we have linkages to the, the film and television industries within the rest of the Caribbean. Very cool. Thank you. That is exciting to hear that there are 
uh, other other regions waiting <laughs> to join with yeah. you. That's fantastic. Um, which advice um, would you give to people who are thinking of starting a WIF chapter? Um, what do you consider important when you start off? Both of you, I think it's a question to both of you, I guess. Um, okay, so we, we were fortunate um, because we had a set of women who went before us. Um, I was on the original group in, in, in the early 2000s. Um, I was a founding member from then. We had a bit of a, 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 a respite for a while, um, but we, we all, our market already knew about the importance of WIFTI. So I think uh, we, you, the benefits of WIFTI as an organization is an important entry point. Um, and and I, I think once your once your your country, I, I was explaining to, to Helen that I, I I am not sure that based on where we were in our in our first foray, that our our industry was ready for an organization like Wifty. I think we are now at a place, I think the people who started it were absolutely visionary. And um, they saw where it could go, and they are, they, you know, they they continue to work with us and encourage us forward. Um, I think our industry is on a little bit more of an even keel now, and is able to accept and and work within organizations like Wifty and Jafta, which exist in Jamaica. So I um, I would say you have to form a critical mass, um, get the people together, and have them understand the importance of the international um, relationships. And just start. Kenya said it. Just start. <laughs> we just decided one day we're having an election. <laughs> the election is January. It's going to happen. And if 10 people voted, 10 people voted, and we had an executive. And then, you know, once we're there, then now we'd make decisions going forward and, you know, include more people and try to grow um, the process. And we have a great executive, like, super great. So, just start. I think just to add to that point as well, um, I think one thing that makes it, well, two things that make it easier to start an association like this is to get um, validation from the people who you want to serve that this is actually something that will be useful or beneficial to them. So in that initial reconvening meeting that we had where there were over 70 persons in the room, I think the question was raised, well, we said, well, what I saw in the presentation was, well, this is what the potential for WIFTI is if we were to join, but what is it really that you want solved? Like, what are your problems and how can an association like this help? So if you get that buy-in from persons and they realize that this is of value to them, then it makes sense for them to say, okay, I'll join, I'll be active, which is what you really need, um, active membership. And if it's so important to me, I'll be willing to pay dues. You know what I mean? So I think that that is, that is super important. Um, and having, clear, having a clear value proposition. Yeah. And uh, so you can have active membership. And it took us a while to kind of figure out, you know, among the other associations, what are some of the unmet needs that we could help to serve? And I think that we've been through having webinars that touch on very specific pain points that Jamaican practitioners, you know, experience. How do I charge? How do I set rates? So have persons who've been in the industry for years and still trying to figure out, boy, in this economy, am I really budgeting my, properly, my, my projects properly? So trying to address those specific and unique issues are ways that, you know, I think we can provide that make um sense for you to then say okay here is how an association can can solve those problems help to solve those problems delightful thank you uh for that uh we have a couple of questions actually um of people being very keen to join you i think in with jamaica um and they're just asking what's your website how much is your membership uh where are you um are you in a central location? Can you just walk us through that real quick? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you an email address. <laughs> and I'm going to say to you, email us and we'll send you all the information. Um, we, we have a very efficient um, administrator and uh, membership team, which will just send you the information as long as you email us. Our email address is wift, W-I-F-T-J-A, reconvened. R-E-C-O-N-V-E-N-E-D 
at gmail.com with Jamaica. I just put it in the chat a while ago. At gmail.com. If you send us that information, um, send us, you know, your, your, your interest, then we will respond to you with all of the information. But it's inexpensive for the, the year and it's worth it. And we have a, a, a keen group of women um, involved in the process. Great. And are you based in a specific location or are you kind of doing most of it sort of digital and, and decentralized? Our meetings are digital at the moment during COVID. There was a point at which we were coming together, but we are now digital, digital which works. We have, we have, an, uh, we have an address, and, uh, but, but most things are digital at the moment. You get a link and you join the meeting um, and, and, and so on. So that's how we're operating at the moment. I mean, technically, you, you could be a Jamaican member anywhere in the world and you could get access to, you know, meetings, which you would have, you know, either through a link or we have even done meetings on Facebook, Facebook and webinars and stuff like that. So I think that we're pretty accessible now. That's fantastic. Um, thank you for that. Um, now we have some questions sort of on production in, in Jamaica. Um, and let's start with this one. Uh, how is there, is there sort of a trend how films are financed in Jamaica? How do you tend to finance films in Jamaica? We're working on it. <laughs> 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 there are different ways. And, and of course, there, there's an issue, first of all, that um, different types of films, television is, is funded in a different sort of way to film projects. Um, mm -hmm. Um, sponsorship has been a corporate sponsorship has been a large part of the funding experience of Jamaican film. It's not ideal. I don't think anyway. Um, we are grateful because it has allowed us to do a lot that a lot of the things that we've needed to start doing, but it, it, it means that you have to kind of adhere to particular corporate goals and corporate, you know, if, if, it, if the most controversial- sure that the product get featured, they have to make sure that the yeah. brand is properly located, but at least you get the money to, to go through production. And you're not really gonna get your controversial films um, pretty much funded unless you know the person really well. So sponsorship has been a big part of that. The traditional means of, of funding for films, there are a couple that have been able to raise some film, some some funds and find investors. Um, but we're, we're working through the development of new models for financing films. And that's a, that's a part of our major issue at the moment. Um, and I think I think one one filmmaker has um, actually raised funding, raised funding with a financing house in order to I think through investors has mm -hmm. invested in his film as well. It's I wouldn't I don't know if I'd call it a trend because I don't know that many persons have gone that route, but there are some outliers who are able to um, raise um, investment for their projects. I think mostly though, as Deborah was saying, through sponsorship. And I think that for, certainly for the Jafta, the raft of Jafta shorts, which are like, you know, 10 minute films that um, have been produced over the past three, five years, grant funding has been a big part of how a lot of, you know, short films get produced. And it doesn't often cover the entire, it, it doesn't cover the entire budget. So the balance of that is really, funded through individual contribution contributions from you know the crew the cast everyone who basically gives of their time gives of their effort for those projects that are passion projects that are not being done for a corporate um purpose and and there's quite a bit of um co a collaborative vibe in terms mm -hmm. of um, the sector. There are lots of people who will, you know, give you a day or um, give you, you know, some hours of editing or so on to get those passion, those passion. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there's quite a bit of that that happens. Um, but I, I suppose at, at this level, it's important to say that with the kind of stories that we have available in Jamaica and scripts that are sitting on people's shelves and so on, there are opportunities for partnerships 
and investment, um, the, the great investment opportunities and opportunities to come and shoot in Jamaica. You know, so those of you who <laughs> who want to come and do some of that, we're, we're happy to have discussions because we know there are lots of our of teams, of very proficient teams in Jamaica who have, who have work that they want to do. That's so cool. And actually, there are a couple of questions uh, just about that. Uh, one from Natalie Thompson and one from Marie uh, Silverstein. Uh, and they're both revolving around co-productions. Um, Natalie says, during the COVID times, we have found that many more festivals are open online to our filmmakers. Many require find, to find co-producers from the developed world for each proposal. Um, mm -hmm. You can talk a bit about that if you want. And then also Marie asks, um, are Jamaican filmmakers actively seeking international co-production partners to gain finance uh, for their projects? Actively is an interesting word, but, but Natalie, Natalie, um, the question from Natalie is an important one, um, mainly because Natalie is a past president of UFTI um, and she's, she's, she's our illustrious past president and has worked, worked a great deal within, within the sector um, and someone to whom we, we, we look up. Um, and she knows a lot about the issues of co-production. And yes, there are opportunities. There are people who are, are willing to do the processes of co-production. Now, the challenges with co-production that we find is sometimes finding the matching points. And um, very often co-production deals ask for you to match particular funds. And um, that often that's an issue. But I am sure that if the issue of looking for co-productions. Um, I'm, I'm, I, am, I am not aware of anybody at the moment who's looking for co-productions, but um, I'm sure Natalie, who is a person who kind of deals with many of those things, those international um, issues with, with JAMPRO um, and our film commission. I'm sure if you were to, um, to get some information into our film commission, they, they, they would be able to ensure that you are linked with the right people. So let me, let me do it that way. Our film commission is very active. Um, our film commissioner is Renee Robinson. Uh, and we can possibly look up the, the email address for um, JAMPRO and maybe we can post it before we are through um, today or we can send it out through WIFTI. Perfect, yeah, maybe Kenya can also uh, just write it in the I'm chat. getting it now. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Effective, very cool. Um, and uh, is there does Jamaica? Could you say um, Jamaican filmmakers? Is there a lot of sort of genre films like horror, science fiction, these kind of things? I know that there are some that have been written, um, not as much produced. I, can you have you seen any kind of? Um, there have been a few. Um, pilots that I've seen and a few shorts that I've seen emerging in the past I would say five years um, mm -hmm. from very I would say younger filmmakers have been doing some keen exploration into um, cultural themes um, I'm thinking of the origins film that Kurt um, has produced and that's now becoming a series um, due to support actually from I think he got some grant funding and also the Ministry of Culture even stepped in because of its cultural context um, to help to produce that. And there have also been other younger you know, filmmakers who are inspired by Marvel, who are inspired by superhero stories and have been producing shorts that are... Um, who's, you know, the characters have, you know, powers and are exploring, um, you know, themes that you wouldn't traditionally think of when you think of a, a stereotypical Jamaican story. Um, so I would say that there are more explorations now in like horror, in, um, in, in themes that are um, very different from what you would think of when you think of sun, sea, sand filming in Jamaica. And I think that's primarily those persons who are doing that interesting are persons who are Jamaican, but they've studied overseas, they've gone abroad, they've been a part of other productions, and now they're experimenting with, um, with new types of stories here now. Seeing the trends and they understand, mm -hmm. you know, 
the value that that sort of stuff has. But I, I will add to that from a, a, a contra, cultural perspective. We have lots of horror stuff that we can read. Oh my gosh. That's your thing. We can, um, we, we, we have an interesting um, cultural <laughs> perspective that we can bring to your, your, your horror thoughts. <laughs> I think coming out of, I think in the next couple of years, certainly, I think you're going to see a lot more of persons tapping into, not just from a folklore standpoint, but um, I think the, like the Jamaican personality um, is kind of distinct. When you think of Usain Bolt, you think of Bob Marley, you think of a persona um, that is, you know, very vibrant and very loud. And when you couple that now with horror and you couple that with, um, you know, sci-fi, it can lead to some unexplored avenues and stories. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that emerging in the next few years. That is so cool. I'm totally thrilled. Um, can you recommend any films or any content from Jamaica to our audience? Oh, yes. Can you want to say that one? Um, I'm, I'll go after you because I know it's a very long list. <laughs> so um, we have... The some of the more recent ones are uh, Destiny. Uh, we have Storm Salters, Better Must Come. We have Sprinter that um, just was and just complete. Big. There's another one called Josie, uh, which was, was made in Ghana, Barbados, and Jamaica. So that was an interesting kind of co-production. We have some of the, the older, older um, um, films. The that, classics. Classics like, you know, we can't talk about Jamaican country without talking about how did they come, um, Perry Hensel's The How Did They Come, Dance Hall Queen. There's, there's, and, and, and then there are the shorts that are being made now. Just yesterday, I saw a short called Sweet Rind. Um, there's Nadine's um, short called Tree Town. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're and I mean, especially in terms of shorts now, we have to give a big up to, to Flight. Um, and uh, yes, Kia Moses and Gabrielle Blackwood, um, you know, and the team really put together an amazing short film that had even been premiered on HBO earlier this year as well. Um, yes, so I think that they're definitely, and it'd be great for us to be able to sort of pull this together and share this with the WIFTY members, but some of them are available online as well. Um, and the stories range from you know, music and culture to space. So there, there are quite a few themes, you know, in between. And then beyond the film realm, there's also the television realm. So um, we have we have people like Delia Harris that has been doing a lot more kind of local television. Um, she's had she has several series. Um, there, there's just quite a bit. There is Life and Death, which is in the documentary. Um, there, there's. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's quite a bit. We really do need to put together a Jamaica reunion. I wonder if Renee has I something. think so. If you want to have a Jamaica movie night, we need to have a <laughs> list that we can recommend to, to all the WIFTY members. And there are some animations coming out as well and a few shorts that we should add to the list. Yes. That is definitely noted down <laughs> on our end. Thank you. Um, I'll just bring in Helene again also just to answer one question, there's one specific question for oh, Helene. I'm, I'm, also, I'm, I'm totally red. I'm so, uh, <laughs> so nice listening to you. Um, yeah, I'm thrilled too. So, but I should answer a question. Yeah, exactly. And you can you can uh, answer or you can talk a bit about this worldwide uh, development lab that I think came up during this discussion, and also maybe elaborate a bit on Natalie's question: um, how Wifty could help with um, linking Jamaican productions uh, with other productions from the developed world if you know what with this role yeah um, no but it, it makes me, it's music for my ears because uh, you know since august we have a new with the board that is uh, 16 people uh, from six continents uh, and, and compared to the to the previous board where we were from three continents and only eight people uh, now we have a more diverse board, board and we are really from everywhere and we right now started to work in committees and we have one committee that is an industry committee and I will definitely bring those ideas I, I was that's why I'm so excited to hear because I think Oh my God, we should have a WIFTY Worldwide Development Lab. That's a great idea, I think. We, we have discussed to have a WIFTY Worldwide pitch, 
one of my big visions is to have a with the worldwide fund where we should have and and uh, inshallah we, we have I, I can't say how we will create it but it would be very good to have our own money because that is what can make change and listening to you I, i'm really encouraged to go out and, and continue to work on that we also have a financing committee so Thank you for bringing in so good energy and, and all these good ideas, because that's also what we need as a board to hear, because what we want is to connect. And that's what you have said over and over again. And, and what you said, Kenya, actually, I forgot one sentence because you said, start where you are, do what you can. But I, I missed one. You had one more sentence. What did you say? Um, I think it was use what you have. Use what you have. No, but I, I, I love it. I love it so much. And I think that was really something we should remember because with that spirit and that energy, we have a lot. And the, you know, the richness we have by being connected and by communicating mm. like you did for us now and, and, and to bring this around the world. And I'm promised the day you want to be connected to Iceland or Denmark, it's my big pleasure to introduce you to the right people because that's the thing with networking. Networking is not a big technical thing. Networking is to meet, like we do now. I and think, it's, yeah, though, yeah. I think though, though, Helen, that we need to we, we need to do it systematically so that we're clear of that course. we are really creating yeah. opportunities for yeah. people to meet. So yeah. we know that yeah. we're putting together yeah. this person from Denmark with yeah. this person yeah. from yeah. Kamal. Yeah. Of course, and that's yeah. why we have this committee. So I have big expectations. We had the vision and mission from the committees to find uh, in end of this week, we expect to have action plans. And I would definitely bring your message to the committees next time. Uh, I think we're running out of time. So a big, big thank you to the two of you. And I hope, I'm looking so much forward to this Jamaican movie night, by the way. <laughs> and <laughs> we're have to do it for now. those of you who are inspired now, you can also continue to be inspired because earlier this evening, because it's evening in Sweden where I am, uh, I had a, a meeting with uh, Lori Dalton, who is a location scout and create, she worked with, Location scouting and creative solutions in LA. And uh, she's a trailblazer, very much the same energy like the two of you. And we will have another WIFTY webinar December 20th, Sunday, de December 20th. I think it is eight o'clock Central European time, which would be 11. Uh, o'clock pacific time and yeah that's the only time zones i have in my head so so but if you look up central european time eight o'clock you will know what time it is and there will be a news that is going out but please come back and meet laurie dalton and us again and thank you much very much and stay safe and healthy and take care of yourself thank you Bye. thank you